Hello, everyone, and welcome back. It's Star Ladder Season 12, America Ladder Phase season. 2, and we are in a very anticipated and excited game number three of this best of three series. We're in the lower bracket of this double elimination setup between these four America teams, and we only have one spot for one of these teams to go to book a rest and go to the Star Ladder land to represent America. Who will it be? Wheel and Void Boys. One's got to move on. One has got to go home. And we saw a very exciting Void Boys take game number one. Wheel promised start in game number two, and it was a bit of a nail-biter at the end, but they do manage to secure it. And here we are, game number three hype. And, well, it's myself, Kyle Guy, and I got Mott back with me here. And really, Mott, we've learned up to this point that you just can't bank on whether or not one team has the upper hand or the advantage. It's just... I don't know. It's just going to come down to who really can execute and just kind of walk away with this one. It's it's very clear there's no one team that's just that much better than the other. Yeah, I thought for a long time that both teams had <clears throat> the better late game in the drafts. In game number one and game number two, I discussed how Void Boys had the draft advantage in game number one. However, they lost a couple of questionable fights and it made it a bit closer. Game number two, there was a bit more of that. Wheel, obviously, with a really good late game advantage, but then it got a bit closer than maybe they wanted. And, uh, you know, they had to kind of just, they had to sit back, reconsider what they were trying to do. And, uh, and they also had to stave off a pretty big push coming in from Void Boys. BN, he went hard on that troll. It just wasn't enough, but now he's going to get the Shadow Feed back in his hands burn. again. There is no Sniper for Relic this time around. Radiant that will not back. be available. And I think that was the one biggest, uh, the, the big the big kind of problem for uh, Void Boys in the last Dyer game was the sniper. Back. You could argue that Sleasel's PL was a big issue. It was. I think it was the combination of the two heroes. Now we'll see what they go for. Yeah. Do Wheel put the troll in the safe lane? They send him mid. What do they back. grab for their mid laner if they said troll safe lane? Is there going to be a PL? Probably not. There's a lot of questions to be answered, but the biggest mm. one is who's going to move on? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know, but it is Dota, so we got to have Troll involved some way. And there he is, now going to be on the side of Wheel, and probably in the hands of Sleasel, who, I mean, in their matchup against Tinker yesterday, he had to have one of the fastest farm trolls I've ever seen. I mean, it was just snap of a finger, he had a Scotty, and he was ready to go, but it just still wasn't enough. So it's being able to have more than just a very stacked troll and so we'll see if they're going to be able to kind of have a lineup and a way to kind of build around it which doctor is going to be his pairing at least for now uh shadow fiend and vengeful spirit the dynamic duo i mean this is grabbed time and time again from many a team just good minus armor synergy you get the benefits of how they're each good in their respective positions you know vengeful spirit remaining. is Great for defensive and offensive swap setups. Weave is or uh, wave is great for stacking creeps. Minus armor, vision. We don't need to talk about this crap because it's been said time and time again how good these heroes are. So it's a matter of taking it to the next level and finding a way to get one up on your opponent as far as the draft goes. So where are they going to look to take it from here? If it's just based on recent history, this should be what I imagine their secondary support grab. Could possibly consider another jungle grab here. Chen, Enigma, they went with the Enigma Spirit in the previous Breaker. game. No, Spirit Breaker. That's Dyer where things get funky Breaker. and where you want to take it to the next level. Space Cow, picked up for Void Boys. They could play him as a support or they could play him in that offlane core role mm -hmm. for Void Boys. We'll see what Mercy Please decides. Important to note, uh, we are by far and away the biggest Venge pickers, at least between these two teams. They've had Venge, I believe, both games. Void Boys, we talked about how important uh, Venge is and how good of a hero she is, but remaining. we haven't talked about how important it is to deny that hero from the team that feels comfortable Five playing her. Um, we all will grab a Witch Doctor, which is, again, a very good hero, especially in the late game when you it's have an Agon Scepter, Witch Doctor ulti, but without a Vengeful Spirit to maybe have a, a comfort pick for Derp Derp, I'm not sure how this really works out for Wheel. What their second support is, there's no Earthshaker, which really goes well with Witch Doctor. Maybe they go for, uh, they, they need some, and uh, maybe a little bit more Disable, because you only have Cask early on, maybe like a Rubik Telekinesis. Mm -hmm. You could go for a jungling hero like an Enigma. They have that option. We'll have to wait and see. And um, I don't know, man. It's tough. 
It, I like, like the idea of the Rubik that you were saying because they're going to need a way to stop the Spirit Breaker from getting in your face, and he has like the natural Yules in his telekinesis. Just quickly, hip, shut up, throw him up in the air, get him out of your face, or at least someone who can get a Yules quick, or uh, at least a core in a position that they can get a Yules quick. They could go back on Alina again in the mid lane, just some way to deal with the Spirit Breaker because if each comes charging on through, he, he hits a couple of you on the way in. It's like a full team disable, and then he lands that Nether Strike, and you're just caught in a bit of a jam you need something that can react real fast to stop him even a lion just some way to just yeah. prevent him from being able to go on his blitzkrieg kind of a status so we'll we'll see what it is that the wheel will decide decide to respond with here those are both in my book at least pretty good even if they get a rubik i mean stealing charge is a great spell to have so we'll have to see Band of the Slardar is pretty uh, interesting to me, by the way. I just thought that was peculiar. I don't see a whole lot of Slardar on Void Boy's team. Yeah, they they feel like I think maybe it was a whole like minus armor kind of thing. Like we don't want to really have to deal with all of that minus armor between presence, wave, and amplify damage. Mm -hmm. And they would have the dazzle to deal with it, which they go for. And that's a curious pickup because Axe is still in the pool. No, he's kidding. Ah, uh, he's not. Just kidding. He's the fourth band from Void Boys. Dang it. I thought I, I thought I was like, oh, he's in the pool. They can easily call and Dazzle won't be a factor anymore. But now Dazzle is huge here. They have no axe. He gives plenty of armor. Mm -hmm. Grave is available. Shadow Wave Ten to keep the troll removing. fighting fit. I think this is a good support. It doesn't have that disable, which we talked about, Five to stop the Spirit Breaker, remaining. like a Telekinesis or a Hex or an Earth Spike. But maybe they'll have another way to he's deal with that top. charge. Yeah. For now, though, it's Void Boys probably looking for either their secondary support or their offlaner, and that will obviously decide the role of this Spirit Breaker. If they were thinking about offlane, Clockwork's out, Axe is out, uh, and Batrider, of course, is out as well. So your Tidehunter, who's been picked up already, uh, your Centaur, uh, Bristleback. If they even want to get more Minus Armor, Bristleback actually wouldn't be a bad option whatsoever here, and they would have a pretty good front line between both Spirit Breaker and Bristleback. This is, of course, if it's going to be a, a four-position Spirit Breaker. So, if that's yeah. if that's not the case, they can get their own secondary support, like a Lion. And, yeah, they'd be, they'd be sitting pretty there. They'd have a pretty good setup between the Vengeful Spirit and Lion as far as supports go. Bristleback is very good at this game because against Troll, like, that's one of the heroes that matches very well up against Troll. Um, whereas a lot of heroes kind of have a rough time in lane against him. It, Early on, it's kind of terrible because there's a lot of right-click between which Doctor Dazzle and Troll, but once he gets a couple levels in Bristleback and maybe, you know, that early Vanguard, he becomes a force to be reckoned with. And then on top of that, you have Viscous Nasal Goo for Ro Roshan. Although they're again on the Radiant side, you could still sneak it pretty easily. I don't know if the Radiant Dire side thing is remaining. actually a thing anymore. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, it, I mean, it still exists to a certain extent for Dire, but yeah, good call, man. Bristleback, there it is for Void Boys. They'll, they'll, so they will be uh, supporting Spirit Breaker. That's an interesting. I mean, the the other thing is it's a safe lane Pat Soul Bristleback, and I say that as if it's far fetched, but he just played a Brewmaster, so really I don't know what the hell Pat Soul wants to do. More than likely, though, I'm anticipating this is an off lane Bristleback, a four position, uh, a fly probably, Spirit Breaker, and then this fifth pick will be for Pat Soul. So, yeah, now they got these big freaking ugly mugs seconds, in the front really? lines to be the muscle boys getting in your face. And then you have backliners like Shadow Five Fiend seconds, who are able to really? kind of just do what they want with their right click, plus possibly this fifth pick, which is Pat Soul. It could be Morphling, it could be a Slark. Seconds, we'll have to Literally see this Literally any hero in the pool. Literally anyone. It's Pat Soul, for God's sakes. Five the man of Let's, let's uh, farm and tree and protect her. Let's go. Yeah, I want to see right? He could be her. playing the vengeful spirit and core with it. Who knows? But <laughs> that's a sle that's a that's a Sleazel standby. Sleazel used to do that all the time, in, like in houses. Yeah. Oh yeah. He like he would like just destroy people. Would like go oh, man. It's a desolator, and people would be like, I guess I'm dead now. I guess I'm swapped into death. I mean, she can fun. hit. She can hit really hard with that aura. She just has natural great base Five damage in her own way to me. find minus armor. I mean. I, I sincerely doubt we'll see it here, but there there was always potential and something that teams yeah. and players used to go for. But the doom grab and oh, they're going to ban out that Lena, which is something I was still going to be banking on here for wheel, but they're not going to get it now. But a doom, a doom pops up. That seems like a direct counter back to someone like a bristleback to me. Yeah, it definitely is. The problem with doom is that he doesn't come on for a while, mm -hmm. and I think Void Boys will have a couple of. Remaining. Decent items. They could just run at Doom and the rest of the team early Five on in the game. Remaining. Doom could come out and he can use his uh, his ultimate early on, but it doesn't cancel the Bristleback passive anymore. 
I think. Radiant and he's like, he's okay, but it's it's not it, like it's it takes a lot longer for Doom to ramp up and to become as big of a factor. Yeah. Because you need Blink, first of all, I think for the most part, I, most teams should get Blink on Doom. Then you need Agonims and probably Midas is as well. So it takes a decent chunk of time to get anywhere near where you want to be on Doom. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an IX might do. During Ten Star Ladder, uh, he was when he was pubbing, he like played Doom all the freaking time. It was all Five Doom all the remaining. time. So it's not like a hero he's not used to playing. A hero is easy in pubs. Yeah, That's but the thing. you gotta you gotta have a good laning phase Dire though, and pick. be able That's to hard. come out from a big. But here he is, it's the Pat Soul Morphling. It's a scary one in that, and uh, though they do benefit from a little bit of minus armor with the dazzle. Gotta hope it's enough here. This is a beastly lineup here from Void Boys. Pretty greedy. Could be somewhat greedy. But, yeah, it just seems like once they start getting these first four characters here online, they can create a good space window for uh, Morphling remaining. to just find his way into the late game, which is what Patzel loves to do. Five Unlike last game remaining. where it felt a bit weird with the Brewmaster, this is the bread and butter of Patzel. So. The final grab here for Wheel is going to be the Wind Ranger. We saw good work with it in game number one from Void Boys. Now it's going to be Wheel grabbing it. And it's going to be a mid lane Wind Ranger at that, going toe to toe with Shadow Fiend. I like this grab. Uh, this is They be banned fun. out Lena last pick, and I think Wheel could have gone Lena uh, instead. Mm -hmm. It gets banned, and Relic has to go with Wind Ranger. Relic's, uh, I'm pretty sure, going to be fine with Shackle Shots, although I'm not sure if he'll be at the level that Mercy Please was at in the first game, which was incredible. He had hit some ridiculous shackle shots. Most of them, they didn't seem that difficult to hit, but he was hitting them on such a consistent basis that it seemed like every fight or every single initiation, there was a shackle shot latching to some tree getting a kill. So we'll have uh, that same option. And he will Ten do pretty well seven. early on against the Shadow Fiend. The matchup is pretty strong for the Wind Ranger. As the game progresses, like any hero, mm -hmm. Shadow Fiend takes over. When heroes do well, they get levels and they get kills, and Dota is one. John there's a game Madden. of heroes. Uh, there's heroes on both sides. Five, I Five think. Five of them. Yeah. yeah. The throne must <laughs> go down. Only one of them can drop first, and that's the team that wins. So, Here we go, folks. Game number three. Hype time right now. Void Boys taking on Wheel. Winner gets to move on. And loser is going to be done with Star Ladder Season 12. So we'll find out who it is. Leading out introductions on your Radiant side, it's the Void Boys. They took Game 1 and fell short in Game 2. Beyond, going to be playing your Shadow Fiend. No Arcana. So going with the old school black sleek look right there. Pat Soul on his Morphling. We got Fly, who's going to be repping more of that four-position Spirit Breaker. And along the top, we got Omega Poner, who's going to be playing your Support Ventral Spirit. And that leaves Mercy, please. On your off-lane bristleback. The tourist get-up, I like to say. Yeah, that is the tourist get-up, dude. And I was like, I was trying to think of the right word for that, like, hat. The and safari like, hat, yeah. It really is, man. It, and it's not like a safari hat, like, oh, this guy's like our guide. It's like the hat of, like, somebody yeah. who's just like, I don't know what I'm doing he here. He needs to have, like, sunscreen on his nose that wasn't rubbed in. Just, uh, but, no, oh, he's, he's getting into a bit of engagement here. This is not what you want to do when you're visiting a, a foreign country as a tourist. Just kind of throw out cool <laughs> sprays. You're messing with the the Rastafarian locals over here between Witch Doctor and Dazzle. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> stay away from the ruin, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, he makes his way back with Vengeful Spirit to the top lane. So they're gonna run dual lanes here for Void Boys, and they're gonna be going against uh, not a dual lane setup here. In fact, Derp Derp, what is he up to? He wants a courier. He wants a courier, man. He yeah. wants a courier. This is super greed coming out. Does Beyond, see... Beyond's like, I'm, dude, I, I've got like a two minutes, a good two minutes before I oh, get, well, maybe not. Oh, maybe not. I just okay, kidding. never mind. Two raises. They see he only has two branches and two shared tangos. He, they oh, know they he's know. rushing it. Oh, they know. This patient play could pay off, but then again, by now, Void Boys have to be like, hey, there's a Dazzle missing, by the way. I don't know where he is. He hasn't shown up since that weird thing. All right, let's watch. Let's, let's, get our, let's get our Courier cam okay. going on right now. Okay, there it is. Courier walking. He's, 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 he's thinking he's alive. The grill he's hound. Oh, oh, the back look course. At that. He what? actually got right. He got oh. right here, and he's like, no, oh, go this way. Oh, he wants it still. Derp, derp. Derp, oh, derp. No, no, the creep way. I've been founded. I've got to go. 
I'm taking the wave with me. I'm sorry, my mid lane friend Relic. I'm ruining everything. Oh, Relic's bummer. Relic's like, I need that CSP. You're going to need to bring that over here, okay? Let's yeah, he's we like can't. this. Oh. Relic well, going to right click it quickly. Got it. All right. Secured. Oh. Very unfortunate there for Wheel on trying to go for the courier snag, but also big props to Void Boys for having the heads up to be like, hey, Dazzle's been missing. Something doesn't seem right, and they take the low road with that courier, which I've seen plenty of teams make that mistake, and it's cost them. A certain, what was it, TI4 qualifier match comes to my mind that could have changed things dramatically if they didn't lose the courier in that same fashion. So I don't actually remember that game. I, I was, was passed out. Narvi... Or like, yeah, Navi think, US. I mean, I remember the game. Like, I remember what game it was. Everyone was watching it. I was like on the floor, uh, in the <laughs> being bought. The room. Yeah, no, dude. Like, I had, like I don't remember. I had cast it or something the day before. I think there was like the summit qualifiers or something like that. And I'm like, I'm going to bed, guys. Except I was on the. I was in the living room. It was totally understandable. We were sleeping everywhere. It was just ridiculous. So it was a mess, man. Well, that was a long month. It, it was like a month that we stayed there. Good, good times. Good well, times. now as the lanes finally settle and Derp Derp's back from his expedition, and it looks like they're going to roll with their tri-lane here at the top. There's an early smoke, and it gets immediately pinged there. But I don't think they were pinging the smoke. Maybe just pinging the side camp. They're just getting in an interesting position here. They see Poner, and they want to interject. Try to work their way through Mercy Please, but Mercy Please is going to start dishing out the early quills, but the cast is going to slow them down, and they do get the connection and the takedown. First blood goes to wheel as they drop the Vengeful Spirit. And the two natives, the Dazzle and the Witch Doctor, mm -hmm. smoking it up in the jungle, wrapping around. I mean, this is just, this is their home. This is what they do. Perfect it's stuff for them. part of the culture. Yeah. All we well, needed was a Shadow Shaman in this game, and things would just be delightful. The real Rasta. <laughs> the true one and only. But, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about CS here. Mid lane Relic 20 and 8 to Shadow Fiend's 10 and 0. I think Relic's doing pretty good considering the fact of Derp Derp's early start. He has definitely found his way with this Wind Ranger against the Shadow Fiend. So. I mean, like, again, this is a matchup that is going to be very one sided until the Shadow Fiend like, hits 5 yeah. and then gets like, well, let me just double raise your camper, your, your creep wave quickly, and I'll head to the jungle. I'll see you in about two minutes. And then I'm gonna come out with like a full arsenal, treads, bottle, Aquila, easy, full Yules. That's what it feels like anyway. Yeah. Mercy Police is going for the top rune spot. Poison Touch is gonna go. Uh, the natives Relic's are back. Gah! Well. They're making a go. Oh, what? Well, how did that light last? of hell? What, light of what the hell was that? That's what I want to know. Mercy Please is probably gonna go down from it, but he gets a lot of quills off, and he does end up getting dropped. But look at this—they actually take down the. The Witch Doctor there on the backhand side, it's Beyond who grabs that one, so it turns into a one-for-one -one trade, but taking down the offlaners, definitely for the better of Wheel. Though you could say that Beyond getting that kill for the mid lane is definitely also very nice. Goody, like, he walked up, he's like, I'm gonna be a part of this kill, yeah! Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> no, that, that was unfortunate for him. Very nice kill, that shackle shot, questionable, I guess. I'm not gonna... The Dota Gods made it so... Flies up top, and he's taking a big chunk of damage from Sleasel. He needs to be careful. He needs to back up. Where the hell did this he come from? He, he, he got a haste room from the bottom rune spot, I think, that he uh, just ran top. So he left bottom. Uh, I feel like maybe, yeah, Pat Soul's going to take the lane over as Mike is not wanting to do anything with that anymore. He's opted to move over and do jungle doom things with Tranquils, it looks like, as well. So yeah. he's going to get started there. He's got a nice little double stack here to work with, and he's kind of looking at it like, hmm, can Yo. I even do this? I need hey, to get can. that bird. He's yeah, got it. Yeah, oh, he's already got it. All right, and he's going to do the Doom Dance. Very awkward dance. <laughs> wow, I've never seen that before. He's like, That's so cool. What are you going to do about it, creeps? I'm, I'm going <laughs> to kill you, and you can't do anything. You're just going to get get be gold in my pocket, I suppose. Easy farm for him. Swagger. That's yeah. Swagger from Ice Mike 88 on the Doom. Easy camp. I don't know. I, that's, like, so huge for a Doom, though. And that's going to get him level 5. He'll have level, two to, or level 3 Devour to work with. It's up to 766 gold. He's going to be going for the Midas, no doubt about it. Goody's going to get the offlane experience while this is happening. Castle could probably die from if he if he sees him, but I don't think he'll go for that. Meanwhile, Sleuze is up top. He's got 38 CS, very close in terms of the safe lane CS. And mid lane, like I talked about, Bien gets level 5, raises the jungle, comes back out, and is actually leading in CS. Ooh, they're going to make it a go. Mercy, please. They lead in with the poison touch. Sleasel starts it off with the slow. 
Do they have enough to break the tough shell? They do. The last right click coming out from Derp Derp. Takes down Mercy, please. This Bristleback. Hard game. Hard life right now. Zero and two. Only level three. It's six and a half minutes in. You compare it to Mike, he's about to be level six as his doom in the jungle. So it's it's going to be a struggling start. Definitely Wheel getting the best of that top lane. For mid lane standards, Relic at 39. And yeah, like you said, look who's matched up with him now. And in fact, pulling ahead, it's your Shadow Fiend. As he's gotten together a couple of levels, he could easily farm these side camps. And that's when the money really starts rolling in. And then plus Pat Soul at the bottom said free farm. So you could just as much say that Void Boys have been winning the other two lanes. It's pretty, it's, it's kind of even. I uh, yeah. the, the one X Factor right now is Mike in the jungle. He's going to have his Midas up soon. He's got way more golden experience than this Bristleback does. He's out-leveling him pretty hard as well. The problem for this Bristleback is that he... I mean, he hasn't gotten level 2 Bristleback until just recently. Oh my god, he's going to go so down again. This. And okay. he's lucky to be alive. If Suzel had any more HP, they dive that maybe get the kill, but... I, I think that's actually the smarter play. They forced oh, the rotation. They're going to cut him off. They're going to cut him off from the rotation he made. There he is. Get him. Doom's going to be dropped. And now it's just a matter of time. They need more damage, though. Is anybody going to oh, deny? Level uh, dead. Uh, right oh. Wow. Relic, so I'll just secure that real quick. No that problem. was executioner style. Right from the back of the head. Takes him out. Four to one, wheel off to a very strong start here. But then we look at the bottom lane, and it's Void Boys who've already taken the tier one, and now they're adding pressure on this tier two. Uh, a fast start coming out for wheel, getting four kills. However, Pat Soul, like you mentioned, now going for the tier two tower. TP's coming in, one already back at the tier three. Wind Ranger will TP in to secure a lot of the farm. And Relic's doing pretty well now. Uh, bottle, phase, wand, null tally. Radiant the build-up is completed. Uh, what is his first big item going to be? That's the true question. Blink, Maelstrom, Agatums is the general build order we see uh, from Wind Rangers now. Maybe going for a Forest Zephyr and Orchid is another option, but Illusion. you see that more often, I think, in, in supports. He's actually going to go Gloves of Haste, which could be the start of that Maelstrom, or is a Midas. We'll see. We all might be curious as to be going for that late game. It's an option. Yeah. Morphling on the other team, uh, if it is a Midas, it would make sense to me, but I wager maybe the early makings of a Maelstrom, but who knows? It's Relic, yeah. and it's his Wind Ranger. We'll have to see what he decides to do with it. Derp Derp on stacking duty. It looks like they're going to have a nice three stacks build up here, uh, more than likely for Sleasel and his troll, who's been having a, a jolly old time as well in his lane. He's got his Morbid Mass, Phase Boots, 800 gold. He's got no kills, unfortunately. All the kills they got on this Bristleback have been given over to the supports, which, you know, I guess good for them. But he'd like to get something himself, and here he goes. He's like, I want this. Um, nope, not going to be able to commit too hard for that one. But he'll pull back, and yeah, there's going to be a lot of farm out there for him to kind of continue to build up, and they're on Dire's side, so the advantage isn't crazy, but it's just enough to maybe make a sneaky play into the pit and have an early work on the Roche, but... Even Radiant wheel supports are looking pretty sharp. You know, level 5 near level 6 for your Dazzle. And Witch Doctor's already got a point booster. Nothing else. He's got no, a point booster no, and three sticks. No boots. No boots. I wanted to point that out. I was like, yeah. so he has a point booster. And that's it. Three GG branches. Sleasel top lane. They committed hard for him. But he's fine. I'm surprised they didn't go further. I think they saw the TPs. They might have almost shackle connecting with the power shot and the right click. That'll secure the kill for Sleasel. Nice rotations coming out from Wheel. That's a big kill. Thank you. Well played. And Mike was looking to get involved as well, but uh, he actually backs off. Does not go for anything. Sleasel just happy to finally get some first blood on his weapons. And Dyer's now they'll chop tower. away at this tier one tower. Patsol, by the way, still quietly working attack. in his own little corner in the bottom Radiant lane. He's got his Midas, he's got his ring, 600. We know there's a morph out there. We know that he's getting free farm. Wheel feeling like they're getting enough done across the other parts of this map that they'll have an answer for him when he does come together here. And it could be in the form of Mike. He drops down the Doom. Long power shot will connect. Brings him already down to half life and dropping here. Can he get one more big nuke? Ooh, he might have to pull away. We got a double damage uh, Shadow Fiend here. And now look at this. Patsol shows up. They say do not think about it. And with them being around, Fly's going to live. And he'll be able to walk away. So, nice little uh, heavy harassment coming out from Wheel, but this time they're not able to commit on the kill. I really like how Mike is being aggressive with these dooms. Otherwise, like that, 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 that spell seems almost useless early on if you don't have the heroes to, to help with it because of how little damage it does now and shutting people down. 
But he got one kill already with it. He has to harass back another with it, all the way back home, in fact. So Spirit Breaker is useless for a couple of seconds. And they force a lot of rotations over to the jungle in the meantime. So I think that's a really smart play. Bien, this seems to be a staple of his Shadow Fiend, is, is going straight for a mech. This is the second time I've seen him do yeah. this in, in the same series. And I, I think this is a smart decision. I really like this item choice. And you could argue that Yules might be better for utility, but... I think this is really, really solid. I believe he does still get a Yules. He just gets it after the mech. Unless that's what I remember seeing him do last time. Uh, instead of going right for that Yules, which we do see from a lot of other Shadow Fiends. But maybe it just comes Dyer's by a case-by-case case thing where, you know, there's no one else on the team that is going to be the mech candidate. Uh, they don't have their Enigma or anything like that. Then he'll have to be the one to do it because it looks like they put a lot into having that extra bit of sustain. So he'll grab it up. Grabs a bottle right now. He's got his power treads, but I would not be surprised if he does move into a Yules hereafter. So we'll see if that's the case. They flirt with Roche here, but look at this fat stack Wheel are doing. And well, they don't know is nearby Void Boy's weight. Do they have vision of it? Oh, yes, they do. They see little movements happening here of the creeps and Sleasel. This is a bit sketchy. Sleasel does have help they right have behind grave. him. Yeah, grave, grave is there. A level 3 Grave. They better get it out right grave now. Him. Grave him. They get right. it. They go right for the supports. Weave's also going to be dropped, but I don't know if Sleasel's going to make it away before he goes down. Death War gets dropped, and there's the Requiem that will ultimately get him. Two go down, and it's a trade for the one Spirit Breaker. It looks like Void Boys are going to be happy with that, and they might pull away. They're thinking about maybe taking the stack. I mean, Omega Poner is like pinging the hell out of it. Like, guys, we could take this. So get over here, Mercy, please. You've been getting your ass beat in that top lane all day. You need this farm. Take it from them. That is actually one of the biggest movements I've seen. Like, Void Boys desperately needed that. Yeah. Mercy, please, is going to get farmed. They'll rotate back in with Derp Derp. He had, they have wards on the high ground. And they'll, they'll back away. They took most of that stack, which is huge, plus the team fight itself going their way. And all of a sudden, Pat's hole with his Midas is coming out. His Liquid Spear is almost done. He doesn't have the recipe. He has the ultimate orb flying now. Uh, Bien is up to 2.8k gold in his bank. Mike's still pretty far off from that Agathem. And that's really when all the damage comes in, and he can actually start fighting. They'll take the tower. They can't really engage. And we'll, they have to kind of back off for now. It's just a, a fight that they couldn't take, and Dyer's that really, Dyer really, Dyer really helps attack. Pat Solon. And, and more importantly, like you talked about, it helps the Bristleback, who now is up to 2k gold. What does he go for? I mean, he has a... Uh, well, he needs to finish treads, first of all. Then mm -hmm. what? Vanguard? Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> Crimson Guard could be, you know, something that he decides to go for here. Uh, a, a Halberd, something else. Definitely got a lot of right-click and... Troll would definitely have a hard time with that one until at least he gets the BKB, so the evasion certainly helps out as well for Bristle. We'll, we'll have to see. He's Mercy, please, though, has got, at least got a wealth of farm coming his way to make choices like that. And then we'll see where he decides to itemize. But Wheel now kind of forced to turn it down a notch here as far as the aggression goes, but they can't afford to kind of move off and do their own thing. We have Void Radiant's Boys here who already have eyes on this Roche. They would love to take this. They had a bit of a struggle in the other two lanes, and getting a Roche would help put themselves Radiant's in it. And yeah, there's the Maelstrom attack. grab right now for Relic. So he's got the magical lightning hammer ready to go here. Where's their initiation coming from right Dyer's now for Wheel? The, the, the question, it's really just a shackle shot, but they have nobody Radiant's blinking in. They need blink too attack. more so than anything else. Then after Radiant's that, where, like, where's the fall? Where's the disables? They don't Dyer's really have it. Tower. And that's kind of the attack. issue. How are they supposed to shut down this Dyer's Morph Fling besides dooming him? They have Radiant's to doom him. Tower. That's the only way. Radiant's and then other heroes can start going to work, like, for example, the Bristleback. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Well, this is in deny range, and I don't know if you go for this. Derp, uh, rather, Omega Pony's looking for a magic missile swap. I think you're dead, Goody. Yeah. And, uh, well, the tower will go down to Relic, but they get the kill, but they might get one in return. Is it being a support for a support plus we'll get the deny? Will they also get... Uh-oh, stop him, Mike! No! Relic, big damage. Oh, what a save. That grave from Derp Derp. Yeah, and that was so goddamn greedy. Meanwhile, Patso getting mans up on, got body blocked by the Alpha Wolf, has to actually... Just, oh no, he, he went from to the trees and he has no mana to TP out, Pat Soul. Oh, uh, that's right. It, the mana regeneration's there, but what a, that was a very greedy play from BN, by the way. Like, that yeah. turnaround, 
he's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna kill him. But again, there's a dazzle with Shallow Grave, and he's like, he's not there. He then rotates in. Nice great play, and at that point, Vienna committed too much. That's three for one, and the tower, I believe, got denied as well. I might be wrong about that. I don't remember. It was denied. It was denied. Excellent. The relic right, did okay. deny it, so it what started as just a support for a support plus to deny, then they also get that Shadow Fiend kill. So it turns out very profitable there for Wheel. And I don't think uh, the Shadow Fiend, he did not have Yules for that, right? He just picked it up now from the fountain. I don't think he no, had he, it for he, that. No, oh, no, he, he did it. use it. He uh, Yules up the, the Wind yeah. Ranger. Probably should have just Yules up the Wind Ranger and ran. I think would have been the best yes. option there. I was, I was thinking like he could have well, just, like, if he had a Yules, no he would have used them up and ran. But I'm like, oh no, duh! He used them up and then went into fight. But that we well, he's we, like he's like there's there's no doom, there's no level death, and he thought the Wind Ranger was squishy enough that he was gonna kill her. I it, I'm surprised the he didn't do more damage, but it, it was not nearly enough. It was actually half of his health followed by a couple of raises, which almost killed him had Dazzle not been there. It was a good idea, but again, it was a little too greedy. I think. Had Dazzle not been there, that's when you know Dazzle's doing a good job. When you think that you're going to get a kill, and then frickin' Dazzle pops out of the dark and says, Nope! And he's got level 3 Shallow Grave, so the rage is pretty sweet. So, then with that, you can just make a quick turnaround play, and you get kills like that. Now here we are. 4-9, to nine, advantage for Wheel. Looking at the net worth chart, it is for Wheel, but only about 2k. XP, 4k. Nothing too impressive quite yet. But we all got to be feeling pretty comfortable. They're still putting together a pretty nice farm here onto Sleasley. He's got Sage and Yasha, Helm of the Dominator. 500 pence as well on top of it. We'll continue to build up, but Roche is an option for them if they do see fit. Relic, after getting that Maelstrom, has already somehow thrown together a quick 2k gold for himself. And for Mike... He's got Ags. He's got to get a Blink Dagger. We fear for the lack of initiation from Wheel. He's got to be one of the few people to do it. So a Blink Dagger seems very crucial to me on the Doom in this game. I think Relic's going to grab it as well, but you're absolutely right. A Blink Doom is is almost the necessity at, at in a lot of these games that you see the Doom in. It, you used to be able to get away with like Utility Doom, maybe even Mech Doom, like Flads, all that kind of crazy stuff. They just smoked on top of this ward. That is an issue. If they didn't see that, then Void Boys deserve to get crushed. However, they will not be smoked on. Roche is going to be the option. They, they absolutely have 100% knowledge this is happening. Plus, they have will illusions. They're just going to move the illusions in there. Hey, how's it going? I know you're doing this. Roche is very low, though. Yeah, Troll is just a troll. They get a quick, oh, Fly's like, I still want to fight. He puts a charge out. Swap back, maybe on an illusion, to get Omega Poner in there. And, well, Omega Poner just gets tied to a tree, and he just point blank unloads all those arrows into his face. Fly is going to go down as well from a lingering last tomahawk there from Sleasel. Ends up being a quick two for none on the back end of a Roche takedown. So considering Void Boys had all that intel from the war, they did not use it effectively. They ended up not getting the Roche, not contesting it, and they lingered around and lost two lives. And they're going to lose a tier two. That was one of the most questionable swaps I've ever seen from anybody. You know, Mega Poner, I don't know what your thought process was, but let's... Let's get it back together here. And now they have to defend at their tier 3 tower at 19 minutes into the game. And Morphling is like, I am not ready yet. I, I only have a Ghost Hefter and a Lincoln Sphere. I don't even have Trez for God's sakes. I can't right click. Doom is still up, by the way. It's level 2 Doom. Sleasel has Aegis. He doesn't give a damn if he gets Adapt to Strike. There is Glyph. Magic Missile goes. They have Grave. Relic going to work. He has his Blink Dagger now. Blink Shackle is definitely a thing to deal with. Mercy Please not at his Crimson Guard yet. Now the Troll ulti going through. They have to do something. The Replicate finally goes. Melee Rax is going to fall in 20 minutes. Whoa. Wheel. Wow. Big statement early here. I don't think Void Boys will be too phased, though, with the Morphling. Uh, but that's definitely, that hits him hard. That was not a fight they wanted to hand over, not a Roche they wanted to hand over, and now a Tier 2, then a Tier 3 Anorax. Whoa, this graph is dipping. Not really surprised by that. So everyone gets a big raise from that on the side of wheel. Your supports now suddenly have like 12k gold after what they probably already spent. Witch Doctor's like, oh yeah, He's I'm on Magnums. This is ridiculous. So, <laughs> like you said... I don't think Void Boys are phased by the fact they lost to Melee Rax. That doesn't matter as much. It's the more it's more so the the fact that Wheel gets that big payday. They get oh, that yeah. extra boost, which allows them to snowball even further. Mm -hmm. And they have the threat of the Doom is too much. The threat of a Troll Aegis is too much. They can't fight into it. And, and if they commit there and lose that fight, maybe they lose the game outright. So they make the right call, I think. They kind of just let it go. 
They do a little bit of damage to some of the heroes. They don't get any kills. They don't get the Aegis. That's fine. They have to hold on a bit for a bit longer. Pat Stoll is, is getting closer to the Ethereal Blade. That's the big item, I think. The biggest thing for me is that Fly has not been effective at all on the Spirit Breaker. He has two assists. When you're a Spirit Breaker, within the first 15 to 20 minutes, you want to be getting kills yeah. left and right. Yeah. And we all have not died, really, at all. There's four kills for Void Boys right now. I got to tell it. you, that's the thing, and it's something I was told when I was like, I want to try out this four-position Spirit Breaker, and I was told from a good buddy, and shout-outs to Lumnun, he's like, you got to make sure you make an impact from the start, even with, like, a level one charge. Otherwise, right. you're going to be falling off fast, and you're going to not have a place for yourself. And I feel like that's where Fly is right now. He's like, I don't know what I can do. I just have this urn with no charges. I don't know how I'm going to get a charge on it. Look at this. They're going again, man. And he's like, like I can't stop easy. them. I'm a single target kind of a hero. We're supposed to be on the assertive, creating space for Pat Soul. They're in our face right now. They're in our base, our home turf. And we have... We have a hard enough time trying to defend. Well, look at Pat Soul. He's in their base. Hey, he's not really doing any damage, though. Look at this. He actually has to go home because they're fighting now, or they're about to, it looks like. Yeah. Pat Soul knows he can't push faster, and he's better served as a fighting utensil here in this uh, initiation, in this situation. By the way, shout out to Lumen, uh He's a good dude. He's, he's, he's pretty solid. Dude. Yeah. He's on the Pugna bag bandwagon along with myself. One day, Pugna will be there, and everyone will know. <laughs> not today. Not today. Could have been good here. Hey, wave clearing, you need it. Pugna's got you kept. That hero's ass. I'm sorry to tell you that, buddy. Uh, I will preach the day, and one day everyone will realize. I mean, right now happen. he's ass. Maybe later he's good. We'll see. We'll see. Here we go. Cecil moves in, and he just gets shoved back, oh. and he moves on forward. Big damage, but Mercy Police could go down. Preemptive grave, and there goes the Agnum's Death Ward. Get the hell back, Patzel. But Void Boys, can they defend? They already Boats lose two, and the Aegis does go down. Mike but, still has Doom. Yeah. Pat's little cake and close or he'll eat that Doom. That's one shackle shot, man. That's one shackle shot. And they'll TP in. Doom about to go beyond. Yules up looking to Requiem Mike. Mike will live. Doom now onto BN. BN has to back up. Mercy, please. No Crimson Guard. Now it is up and available, but taking heavy hits. Mike's still going to work. Look at Sleezel go to town. Finally pops the Crimson Guard. Rax exposed. Shiva's done for Mike. It's flying out to them now. Charge in. They'll get the melee. They'll back away as well. Happy with what they've accomplished. They're losing zero heroes in the process. Might lose one here. Goody. Very low. Oh, that would be a big pickup. He'll turn the corner. There's our charge. Are, are, they're not going to kill him. Oh, they, might they can't their... see him. He goes in the fog. He's trying to charge. Omega Potter's been trying to get close enough for a swap. Oh, can you see him? Swap, swap, swap. No. Oh. Not happening. Dazzle gets away and wheel. Only lose their Aegis and bring down another tier three and another melee Rex. Two lanes now. Oh man. Wheel off to a very strong start. I mean, it's not a start anymore. This is this is only not even 25 minutes into the game. Two big racks have been brought down on the side of Void Boys. Which, by the way, they had to still look at the tier one tower bottom. So there's that. Uh, Cecil's going to take care of that in short order. His Scotty, 100% available now. Easily purchasable if he wants it. He has to send the courier to the secret shop. No problems there. Um, and at this point, it's not so much a start anymore like you talked about. It's more so it almost is an end. If they lose, like, another couple of buildings, this game's over. I don't care what kind of late game they have. There's just too much of leap of wheel. They're not dying. Mike is a goddamn Shiva's. <laughs> At this point, it's it's getting close to, to game over territory, and this has been, I, I have to give wheel props. They drafted a lineup, they had a clear idea of what they wanted to do with it, and they, they've Dice really, they've really made attack. sure that they got it done. Radiant it's not over yet, obviously. You've attack. got a long way to go for Void Boys, but the... You know, you can still see the light at that end at the end of that tunnel. You just have to you have to believe and you you've gotta to try to get some items up. Take back your jungle and don't get bullied around so much, honestly. You have to do some damage. And that comes, I think, to uh right now Pat Soul, who's very close to that ethereal blade, still doesn't have it yet. But he's gotta find a half to wait to Will he save up for the buybacks the true question? Because I feel like if you save up for buyback, then you're just not gonna do anything. But I don't know. It's tough. Actually, no, he, he has... No, he bought it. He bought the entire Eagle song, so he's not saving for buyback. There it goes. All right. Well, there it is. And, well, is it going to be enough? Charge coming just towards the mid lane, I believe, for now. Actually, he has sights on Sleasel here, but he's uh, going to go ahead and snag their Ancients and take that away. 
Would not be the first time, though, I've seen Wheel at a big Radio advantage like this one. Uh, even bigger than this. And things got turned around. Though I do have to say, in that game, uh, which was against Tinker, they didn't have these two sets of racks. So that is a big one right there because they also don't get as much farm from those creeps. And that's precious Pat's soul farm, mind you, for his Morphling. So he's got to work with the bottom, which is the last place to get the full potential of gold. And, well, he's going to have to do it little by little because it's not safe out there in their woods. Wheel have taken control of pretty much the entirety of the map. You have Sleasel taking control of the top perimeter. Back near the base, Relic looking to make his return. They've been farming through the Ancients along the way. They have Derp on scouting Roche duty. Mike's been pushing bottom and working with the jungle as well has been him and charged. Good. But, uh-oh, Mike might be on his own. He has no Blink Dagger, by the way. Yeah, Mike, nope. Yeah, he's in trouble. He might go down here. Charge back and, whoa, okay. That was that surprisingly big, fast. That is a very big kill. And an indication that Mike probably needs a BKB at some point in the future. That, but that that kill that kill might that kill allows them to play aggressively in their jungle now. Now they can farm some camps and get to work. In fact, they're gonna head towards mid. Relic's gonna get charged. He's gonna back up smartly, and Fly will not continue pursuit. This game is not. You have to make plays like that. If they can continue to do that, they have a, a chance. But it's still a long ways up. Those F, that F blade and those raises. Do a lot of work, so something to definitely keep in mind here, as we saw demonstrated there on Mike's poor dead body. As he will go down and got a nice little trifecta here, working with these stacks on the side of wheel. Pat Soul, 1,300 gold after putting together that shotgun. Just continues to push these lanes back out. So seems like the game plan, at least for wheel, is to wait out the Roche, get that next Aegis, and then go for their maybe next hurrah down the bottom. Not going to put them into Megas, but uh, if they get another melee Rax, then things are going to look pretty promising for them. So, can they put the lid on this game and on this series, though, is a big question. Because the winner's the one that gets to move on. I can't emphasize enough the loser is done. They're at the bottom right now of this double elimination bracket, and they need this win. I think right now, for real, if you take the next a uh, Aegis, it is. It is go time. It is time to put the finishing touch on this game. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. Vo uh, Void Boys will go ahead and, and try to counter up a ward. Fly was standing right on top of it before realizing that. No, and he, he doesn't know. He has no idea. So they're all sitting in their in their own jungle. They're going to charge top. They're going to TP there as well. sleasel has got a pretty good idea this is happening. In fact, he just TPs right out. and He's fine. He's 100% fine. Ooh, Relic was waiting for him to charge on through. And even scouted out with the power shot. If Fly had gone a little bit closer, he could have been at risk for a shackle shot and then a quick kill. And this is sketchy territory here for Relic. He Smoke could be flanked wheel. here, but Wheel's also behind him. Oh, wow, mercy. somehow that catches on the Mercy. But the swap could be there for the save if needed. Troll moves on forward. And Omega Poner doesn't, doesn't do the swap, gets stunned and killed thereafter. Death War going to be dropped. Gets a lot of damage out there. And Troll looking to clean up what's left. One more right click. Mech's going to be popped. They're looking to finish him off. They do get it. Patsoul on the run from Mike now. Relic gets a triple cleaning out the rest. And now they see Patsoul, one of the last survivors. But a buyback also comes out from Shadow Fiend. As he tries to defend out the top, they lose the other racks there. And ultra kill for Relic. I think Wheel have just taken this game. Yeah, I think so as well. The buyback came in from BN. Patsel has to buy back as well. They pop the glyph. They can back to Roche if they don't want to be too aggressive. In fact, uh oh, Relic, you're too aggressive, buddy. Yeah, he just uh, ran into death right there. That's what I was talking about. Take my bounty! That is a godlike streak. That's 700 gold for Patsel after buying back. Mike is going to fall as well, it looks like. Uh, I don't know okay. what the Relic is like. Let's go! And just ran towards Shadow Fiend and then... I don't know, maybe he didn't notice the past soul buyback, but he just, he got killed. And they, they get a They're huge go to bounty. Roche. And now they could go to Roche. Sleasel, uh, you need to leave, man. What is left of their base here? It's just two racks on the side of Void Boys now. That's it. But this could be a big Roche comeback here. And it looks like they'll get it. Sleasel's nearby. As far as vision goes, neither team really know what's going on, but that is a quick Roche drop. Sleasel actually throws in the nuke, and that's it. Okay, is it enough though? Void Boys get to stay alive, though they use both their big buybacks on their big cores. They get the luxury of having at least a second life for Pat Soul. 
All right, here's what you do in this situation, if you will, about two minutes ago. You hit the tier three tower. Um, once Glyph comes out and the bo and both buybacks come in, you back up. You don't get the tier three, but mm -hmm. you still end up getting that tower racks. Yeah. You go back to Roshan. You kill it within about two seconds, mm -hmm. and then you win the game. Yes. Instead, they don't do that, and they lose the Aegis, and Void Boys now are given a second lease on life. Well, maybe like a third or fourth, but still. Yeah, it's still a very hard game for Void Boys. As you can see, the pressure doesn't seem to be letting up whatsoever inside their base. They're going to have to have a couple of people here constantly on defensive duty, but... I think we'll... I don't know. I Do you take advantage of this opportunity while those two big buybacks are down and go into their Aegis? Or do you risk waiting... Maybe seeing if Void Boys do something careless to try to take advantage of that Aegis before it does expire. I don't know, man. It's a tough situation because if you try to fight into Pat Soul and you end up losing that team fight, then you've given him a lot of gold and you've given him a way back into the game, buyback or not. But if you end up killing him, it might be worth it. If you, you go in there and you if you kill oh, Pat Soul and BN, you've won the game, regardless of who else is alive on Void Boys. As long as those those two heroes die, uh, I think then then you've probably won, uh, unless they somehow trade two for five or something, which I don't see happening. So it's it's a it's a question of what Wheel wanted to. How aggressive are they willing to be? I think Mike waits for his next item, which should be BKB. It'll be available right after he gets this kill on a sensor, and as soon as the Devourer is done digesting the creep, which is kind of gross, but... But it's got to uh, be done. That's yeah. nature. Human nature. Well, doom nature, I guess. Yeah. This is what the doom does when he reaches this mature state. So, he's got he's to finish it up, but there was a DC here, and uh, we've been fortunate up to this point to not really have any sort of problems... With the cabling and people disconnecting, but apparently these freaking crabs are back. Get out of here! Get! Get! Up oh, here comes the big one. All right. Thank you. See you later, Mott. You probably don't know what the hell's happening right now. I have no idea what you're talking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like screwing Help, with Dakota's these. hallucinating. No, I'm screwing with these fancy little star ladder overlays and stuff. But we got to get the show on the road with this knife. Chop, chop, chop. Let's go. Um. I hope his internet's okay. Yeah, derp, derp, please come back. Not man. a big deal. It's just somewhat of a big, big game on one that they're close to winning. And it's all right. There's a save though. So I mean, if worse comes to worst, hopefully we could save and, and remake. I, I'm I'm hoping or something like that. I don't we got to go buy the Star Letter rule book, whatever they say. So uh, I have no idea what the I, rules are. And normally it's like a waiting period. I mean, we've already had to experience this a couple of times, and unfortunately, this star ladder season. But I think they get. I like heard about the the situation. People just came into my stream yesterday, and they were talking about it. And like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just playing Super Metroid. So yeah, more or less, at player DCs probably due to some sort of problem on their end, or a certain DDoSing is happening, but. It's on the players and the teams to make sure that they are secured and protected. And they're okay. They these games. Um, yep. So the tournament gives them a 10-minute usually. It varies from each tournament and what their rules are. A certain grace period of time with their pauses. But once that time ends, it's on them to get the game back going. So I, I don't think that they would be permitted to have like a stand-in or a remake. Um they might be forced into a five versus four, which on a dazzle, I mean, at least it's a dazzle and not a troll or a doomer or your wind ranger. But still, not having your fifth is a is a big deal. So I, I hope saw, that's not the case. I saw a game. I was casting for Dota Pit where Team Taker was playing, and I uh, no Team Taker was playing Power Rangers in a two game series. Team Taker decimated Power Rangers in the first game. The second game. Um, Boba DC'd and they were up about 7,500 gold. It wasn't as big of a lead. They hadn't taken a racks. They hadn't, you know, eclipsed that 10,000 net worth lead, which uh, we'll have in this situation. But they, within the next couple of fights, uh, Pilot Eye was microing Boba the entire time. And they lost about every single fight from that point on, despite being ahead so far. So, you know, four versus five, regardless of who is disconnected is definitely not the way to go um and we'll despite having a 15,000 net worth lead i still think 
would be pretty difficult to to take this game. Although I don't I don't want to. His mom tripped over the internet cable. I don't know how true that is. Mike I, knows a lot about moms, so I'm going to take his word for it. <laughs> uh, what a guy Mike is. Well, if he said two minutes, that means he might have internet somewhere. So I guess that's good. That's a good sign. We'll make a I mean, yeah. I don't know what the hell that means? Oh, I, that I was part so. of his name. <laughs> so, Boyd boys, though, they've already had the experience when they had their matchup against Complexity. This the same thing kind of happened in Game Three, where it was Fogged who actually was DC'd, and they waited a long time. They waited like fifteen minutes, seventeen minutes, I want to say. I mean, they were obviously at that point like, okay, what's the rules? Are we ready to move on? It's been obviously past ten minutes, and. There were some words exchanged. Obviously, Swindle's like, come on, don't you want a fivers five? It's a fair match. He said he's coming. We need a little bit more time. It was pretty awkward, but it's Star Ladder. It's not my rule book, so Mott, we're just casters here. Just We talk about what we see. I don't have to yeah, kind of lay down the uh, admin hammer on any of this. I see a pause screen right now. Actually, Fly is charging Relic, maybe? Nah, he doesn't have he to charge. He was charging people. Relic, yeah. So I don't know if he let up the charge yet, but I think he's still going. Oh, that's a fun little pose he's got there. He's in the full Superman. Actually, he's like it looks like he's balancing on his weapon. It's like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> that is pretty funny. That's a cool. That's like that's one of the heroes that that just doesn't look right on. Kind of that charge. Eh, that at least that position looks kind of awkward. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. All right, he's back. He's back on TS, which is he's their. Team speak, PC of course. Crashed. But, yeah, okay, good. Connected. Bloody nose. Bloody nose. Some yeah. Mike's making Mom, up. Mom's hurt. Bullshit. But he is reconnected, so whew, we don't have to worry about any of that garbage. It looks like we are going to be able to have a fair match here to round out this last game of our last series of the day, and we get to find out what's going to be the first of these four teams to be eliminated and what's going to be the team to move on and face the loser of the next matchup, which I believe is. Going to be complexity. Uh, the winner gets to move on and face complexity because complexity lost to Tinker in that match you casted with F4L. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we technically casted the first game together, but yes, some other stuff or a third of the game. <laughs> Whatever oh, you want to call oh, it. Oh, Fly was charging on Relic, but now he's dead. So condolences to your space cow. He's now chopped up fillet meat. Yeah. Relic does so much damage. Yeah, that was zero percent scepter. Uh, damage reduction, pretty important when you have Focus Fire and a Maelstrom, and he also has 4k gold. So whatever what item he, goes he next. gets next, MKB. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, MKB. Wouldn't be too shabby here. And or BKB. Or one BKB. Of one of these KBs. And the King Bars. Your fan is soy on Goody Ra, um, Witch Doctor here. Got the four staff after his Agnum Scepter. But he doesn't have a lot of defense, and it seems like Void Boys have been doing a pretty good job. When they see that Death Ward go down, they just immediately focus him. And since he's relatively squishy, it doesn't uh -oh. take a whole lot to bring him down. But here we go. It's Wheel. They want to go right in before those buybacks do come back online, regardless if Patzel is an Aegis or not. They're ready to fight, Mod. This is going to be tough. Shackle Shut does not connect on the Mercy Police. He's the only one with buyback, which is why he's playing so far out, I believe. Replicate onto Bien. So if Bien gets caught, uh, or rather if uh, Pat Soul gets caught, he'll be able to replicate back. And actually, they're going to jump on Mercy. Here we go. He's going to pop the Crimson Guard. Derp, derp, not dead. He graves himself. Replicate out. Ethereal Blade. Sleazel pops the BKB. And now that's down. This could be a bit of an awkward engagement. Are they willing to go further, or are they going to back up and wait for the... Yeah, they're going to back up and wait for the down. Okay, well... A little bit of footsie play there. No real commitment. You could just see that this is a, a very important finish for Wheel if they want to end this game. And same goes for Void Boys. This is a big defense. If they can put up a strong defense here, it puts them right back into the game. Or at least in a much better position. They can at least stall out the clock, get those buybacks back online, and then they're in a much more comfortable position to fight their way back into this one because... There is that rubber band. Every little pick and every little team fight they win gives them such a big economy boost that it's not far from, you know, that point where Wheel could lose a big fight and then all Void Boys have to do is at least try what they did in the previous game and that's go right for Tier 4s and just end the game because, well, it's all about taking that throne. 
You don't necessarily have to take all those side little objectives. Just got to get in there and go for the jugular sometimes if you want to end the game. And that might be something that Void Boys have to go for. Wheel now. I spent getting the BKB. That's the exact item I wanted to see him purchase. Ethereal Blade not going to be effective. Sleuthsel has a double damage. It's actually about to run out. His BKB's back off cooldown. Mercy Please is running right in. That is a ballsy play if I've ever seen one, but he's staying in a position where he won't get shackled, it looks like. They got good time. Still got another minute before these buybacks come up. Shadow Fiend, about 45 seconds still. Which is plenty well, of time to finish it. But yeah, he's he had no bought money. out, it looks like. So this is it. Looks like the Hail Mary of a defense right here for <laughs> Void Boys. It's just a matter of finding the opening no from ages. either side. No Aegis on Patch Phil. And wow, big Shackle's gonna come out of Fear Blade on a Relic. BKB pops. And here's the fight. Fly running in. He's gonna get focused fired. He's brought down. Death Ward. BN about to go down as well. This might be it, Dakota. Yeah, they move in. Mercy Please still alive. Opponent's gonna go down next. That's two on the sidelines. Immediate buyback for Bristle, and well, I don't think he's going to have a whole lot to defend, and Patsol's just stuck walking around in his Morphling, and they can't do anything. They call the game. That's it. We're done here. Void Boys, they're out of Star Ladder Season 12. Wheel, come back in Game 2 and 3 to get to move on, and a match with Complexity will await. I believe that match will be played tomorrow, but what a hell of a series, man. That was really impressive from both sides, but it's Wheel who take the win. Wheel coming in with the, the late game prowess in the second game. Third game, they finally get a snowball lineup to work. And they take it at 36 minutes. That's that's maybe a couple minutes longer than I expected, especially with, you know, getting that first building at 19 minutes into the game. But so well played coming out from them in that in this third game. It was it was so impressive to watch. Congratulations to them. Good luck to them further. And we'll see them tomorrow as they play up against complexity. And then inevitably we'll see the winner of that series move on to play Tinker in that best of five series to Find out who does go to Bucharest, and I'm excited, man. It should be some good stuff. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, folks, that wraps things up today for Star Ladder uh, America, and it was a pleasure bringing you the action. I'm Coddle Guy. Catch me on my Twitter at Coddle Guy, and please show some love to my good buddy and best friend here, Mott. You can catch him over on his Twitter at Mott Dota. And, well, with that said, we'll wrap things up. If you missed any of the action from earlier, the VODs are going to be posted up on the Beyond the Summit, though getting the VODs for the first series might be tricky due to those uh, unfortunate technical issues that we had with the Internet. But we'll try our best to make sure we get everything squared away. Outside of that, folks, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and good luck with your Dota.